Awards. We're going to be talking about real estate. I've got some super high tech infographics to show you. I've also brought a pen and I'm not afraid to use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive right in and we're going to start talking about the news that came out today about the private payrolls. Okay. And they're up, but they were up less. Okay. And we're going to do a little teaching moment here because I think it's very vital that people understand how the dynamics between the economy and, and the news that comes out affects the perception of the buyer when it comes to real estate and how, and I'm going to explain where we are in this real estate cycle because there's a lot of news coming out. And one of the news stories I have is about um, the reason why home sales are down and mortgage applications are down is simply, simply because there's less real estate for sale. Okay. But days on market tell a different story. There's all kinds of things into it. Okay. So thank you guys so much for hitting the uh, thumbs up button. Cause it really helps me out. All right, let's dive right in. Private payrolls rose by 145,000 in March, well below expectations, ADP says. Now, this is out of CNBC. This came out just this morning. It says, private sector hiring rose by just 145,000 in March, down from 261 in February, and below the estimate of 210. Now, it says that took first quarter hiring to an average of just about 175,000 jobs a month down from 216,000 in the fourth quarter and a sharp reduction from the average from the average of 397,000 in the first quarter of 2022 so let me break that down a little bit what is happening right now is the federal reserve is doing what they set out to do and that is to break the economy literally the sad thing is, is that most people think of when the Fed steps in and they start to tighten, right? Tighten their monetary policy, which means a couple of different things. But this avenue, we're talking about raising interest rates, which means that they are not being as accommodating. They're not loaning out money to banks at lower rates. They are um, causing banks to uh, constrict their uh, spending as well and their loan loaning of money. And what it does is it contracts and it constricts the economy, all right? Now, this is one way it happens is that companies stop hiring as many people. Eventually, they start mass layoffs. Now, now, ironically, the layoffs have really started in the tech sector. The tech sector started imploding in the quarter uh, quarter three and four of 2022. And now they're really starting to pick up again. They did this first swath of, of layoffs in December, really, uh, and in the beginning of January. Then there was sort of silence. And now we're starting to pick up these layoffs, right? More and more layoffs. Well, the other day we saw that job openings were drastically down and now we're seeing payrolls down, okay? So, so there's all these different data points that are pointing you to the fact that the Fed is in fact breaking the economy. And the sad thing is that most people believe that when the Fed starts to constrict things and tighten things, that it sort of just mellows off. This big boom and bubble of inflation and uh, growth, that it just sort of does this. It just goes into easy town. And that's what's scary. Because what happens is data points on any chart will show you that you have inflation and growth in the economy like this. And then what happens is this, a flat out, straight up plateau. And what happens is the the day-to-day -day minutia looks like this, but on the, the larger chart, when you uh, pull it out, it plateaus. So it's not that nice gradual slope. And what happens is an immediate, pretty soon out thereafter, a drop in all types of different economic activity metrics, right? So this dream of the Fed just coming in like a white horse and just slowing down inflation, let's just slow it down. Let's get it back to where it's at. It's not what happens. It does this, this, and boom, and it just starts taking off and fear and panic hit. Now we're gonna use all this information I'm reading today to talk to you about the real estate market because I think it's very vital. Why? Because the real estate wealth effect is literally the greatest, man, I got like a reflection coming in here. I don't even know where it is. It's like right on my eye. You can see it in the camera. But my point here, let's just try and change this a little bit. Um, the, the, uh, the, the wealth effect created by the real estate market is the strongest and most impactful wealth effect that there is in our economy, all right? It's greater than the wealth effect that was produced by the dot-com bubble when a lot of people were making money in stocks. The reason why is because on average, more people are actively engaged and see and feel the repercussions of a real estate wealth effect because they could do one thing that they really can't do or they don't do with their stock portfolios, and that is borrow against that wealth and not have to pay taxes. That's one great advantage of owning real estate. Well, when that wealth effect is gone, 
we've got much bigger issues, okay? And that's what uh, I'm trying to show people right now. But right now, we're in that awesome, interesting part of time where the market, the real estate market doesn't know what's going on. It's like, ooh, and I'm gonna show you through some of these charts because, and I'll just give you this, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but right here, we just saw this. After many years of decline, we saw, boom, a bump. And I'm gonna explain that bump and, and put it into very easy, manageable, you know, chewable um, ideas and thoughts for you to, to contemplate. Because a lot of people don't understand this, especially when you go to your local real estate agent or mortgage broker. They don't understand this because they're not investors. They don't pull back and really look at the, the sign of the times and how, you know, how multiple cycles have worked their way out with the Federal Reserve, the government, and the consumer, okay? Thank you so much, West Fontaine, for that. And guys, thank you so much to the 265 people that hit the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. So we're talking about the payrolls, and we're going to dive over to real estate and show you how this uh, plays, okay? And even if you don't own real estate, this does affect you because as real estate collapses, the entire economy comes down, okay? And right now, we've got a massive bubble in real estate, and that's the commercial real estate bubble that's happening. It is huge. Now, it says here, annual pay rose at 6.9% rate in March, down from 7.2% in February, according to the firm's calculations. The job growth was almost evenly split between services and goods producing firms, an unusual occurrence. Now, again, you're going to hear those words, unusual, not normal, um, market surprised with shock and all those kind, you're going to start hearing these coming out and they're going to the words that explain what's going on in the economy are going to start to get over the next six months way more aggressive why because this collapse is going to become very very evident in the consumer and once the consumer gets it they start to change their spending all bets are off the fed can't do anything fast enough to regain that why because emotion once it is spread out and it you know people start to panic it's very hard for the federal reserve the banks the government to get you to trust them again all right jamie diamond came out the other day and said and he is absolutely right the trust is being broken in the banks and that means this a uh, crisis is not over. The exact same thing happened in 2006 when Ben Bernanke was out there trying to ease everybody's fears that they stemmed the tide of the mortgage-backed security crisis. And think about how long it took. It took two years longer for most of the uh, public to finally figure it out and start freaking out, right? And that's when you saw Lehman Brothers going. That's why when I I started warning you guys about the real estate crisis and say, hey, there's there's a heck of an opportunity. You've got time, but time is only based on how prepared you want to be. All right. That is the thing. You need to be able to see the signs. And then that the, seeing the signs brings in the conviction of you to be able to do something about it. All right. So last month, though, financial activities lost 51,000 jobs and professional and business services fell by 46,000. Manufacturing also saw a decline of 30,000. So think about it. Every single time we see a uh, these jobs declining, that's less people putting money into the economy. That is less people that are going to be able to pay their mortgages. Those are less people that are going to be able to uh, to do anything like they did a few months ago. All right. So that is going to add stress on the real estate market. As a matter of fact, the real estate market right now is in pretty much a freeze moment. I know these metrics, and I'm gonna show you these charts. They're showing, oh, a little flurry over here, a little flurry over here. They're changing the way the data is composed or compiled and people literally cannot afford to move from one house to the next. So what is going to drive this real estate crash when it, you come down to the very easy, like surface level reason is gonna be the layoffs, okay? And not only that, you could also add in the, the the payroll that is not increasing, the, the dollar amount that's not increasing to keep up with inflation, okay? So you're gonna see people that have two or three homes sell a home or two, right? Then you're also gonna see people that only have one home be forced to sell their home and look into the rental market because they have X amount of uh, equity, right? They got like 50,000, 60,000, maybe $100,000 in equity. And like, we can't make our mortgage payment. You know what? It's better right now because we can't borrow against our house anymore because these interest rates are so high. We couldn't, keep both of the payments so we'd lose our home let's sell the house and let's take that money and honker down even though we're gonna be paying more for rent well, that means we've got like a year or two or three of expenses but they don't understand that that is going to absolutely crush them but that is going to add real estate to the market if that makes sense to you guys um 
thank you guys so much uh, for the 400 uh, thumbs up. On the plus side, now here's the plus side they say, and then we're gonna dive right into the real estate. Leisure and hospitality added another 89,000 workers. Trade, transportation, well, let me stop right there. I want people to understand that um, uh, a year and a half ago, trade, leisure and hospitality plummeted in the amount of employees they had, all right? That was like the one of the leading uh, sectors that lost, uh, what is it, uh, employees, right? Why? Because they were shut down. They didn't need that many. So now as the economy uh, opened up, they're looking to add to it, okay? So that's good, but you have to look at sort of the bigger picture here, okay? Because it's not what it used to be like. Transportation utilities grew by 56,000, construction rose by 53,000, Natural resources and mining also showed a gain up 47,000. Natural resources and mining are blowing up right now. Why? Because geopolitical issues are causing companies to start to divest in certain countries, invest in others, and there's sort of a, there's a boom going on. I do know this because I work with a lot of CEOs personally, and uh, I'm seeing this. So the, there's a companies are growing right now. All right. Now check this out. Oh, last thing on this, on the payrolls, and then we're going to move on to real estate. Economists surveyed by Dow Jones expect Friday's report to show payroll growth of 238,000 in March and the unemployment rate holding at 3.6%. All right, if the unemployment rate holds or if it goes uh, lower, if it drops, I want people to understand that the Fed knows that they're going to have to keep raising rates. There's a handful of data points that the Fed's looking at that shows that they have to keep raising rates keep putting the screws on. And I personally believe this is my expectation. So this will be my prediction. Don't trade on this. This isn't financial advice, but I believe that the Fed's going to continue to raise rates because they haven't done enough to shock the system to get people to stop spending money. But you can see it in the credit card debt numbers. Credit card debt is exploding. So I know it sounds crazy because you may be watching this channel and you're a totally logical person. You're like, look, I live within my means. I'm looking to crush it during this real estate crash. I own my car or I'm paying it off right now. I'm paying off my debt. You are not the norm, okay? You are a, a, a very, you're part of a chosen few that are gonna absolutely crush it in this thing. But the majority of people right now are living paycheck to paycheck and they are literally out there adding to the balance of their credit cards. And they are still doing things like in their daily routine. And you want to try and wake them up, but I don't know if we can. I'm trying to, they're still got like a Netflix subscription on their credit card. All right, so you think about that. Every month that goes by, credit card debt is getting bigger. Okay, so now it's time for real estate. Now this is going to be a great example of a real estate uh, title that people just don't get. They just go, they they read it and they they think this is a good thing, but it's not. All right, check this out. Good morning, by the way. If you have your coffee, please enjoy it <laughs> before McDonald's shuts down. Okay, lack of home listings. Oh, you know what? I gotta, I gotta say real quick too that McDonald's issue. You know, McDonald's sending people home uh, to remote work so it's easier to fire them. You know, from their corporate offices. Think about how big of a deal this is. Think about. Let me ask you this. Actually, this is good news. Has anyone seen? Instead of a McDonald's, a new construction, freestanding McDonald's structure being built in the last three years by show of hands, put one if you have, put two if you haven't. Freestanding. I'm not referring to the ones that go into like a Walmart or something like that. Um, put two if you have not. Think about how unprecedented this is. It's not like McDonald's just blew up overnight, right? But you are seeing a historic, in our country, historic business, literally starting to to cost crunch. They, they, the consumer, the sales are not coming in as they used to. It is not business as usual. This should show you, these kind of things should show you, yeah, the real estate's going to crash. Like whatever these stories, and I'm about to read this story, and I think it's very important that people realize this. Um, th this is a great measure of, oh, things are going bad right now. All right? Okay, here we go. Lack of home listings take a toll on mortgage demand. All right, so there's bad mortgage numbers coming out. So the way the media wants to spin it, it's because it's somebody else's fault. It's another reason's fault. We're gonna easily digest this. And we're gonna we're gonna be able to put this on the public, and don't worry. And then oh, just you know, uh, housing uh, inventory is low, so you better buy, buy, buy. And that's what some of these charts are gonna show you right here. Okay. All right. So it says right here, mortgage rates fell last week, but demand for homes didn't move higher as a result. 
other aspects of today's housing market are outweighing the benefit of lower mortgage rates right now. Think about this. Other aspects of today's housing market are outweighing the benefit of lower mortgage rates right now, namely a lack of supply. So they're saying, hey, mortgage rates are going up. Don't worry, buy now because supply is going and supply is never coming back. Housing supply is always gonna stay low. We are in a housing crisis. No, the fear mongering and peddling saying that if you don't buy now, you're never gonna be able to afford is showing. And literally the last time this happened was 2004, 2005, all right? Mortgage rates had got up. They got right back up to where they are right now. However, back then it was based on a much lower home price. And now this is what's scary. Payrolls, the amount people, the average pay wasn't much higher back today than it was back then. But what's happening is credit is so much easier to get and these massive balances. And back then you had a car loan that was had to be paid off in X amount of years. Now you don't have to pay that car loan off for almost double that. Think about that. What has happened is the noose has gotten tighter around people, but it's gotten looser at the same time. They're like, well, this noose is not made out of coarse bristle hair, you know, this debt noose, you know, since it's, you know, these payments get to get spread out farther. It's like velvet. Think about this. Still a noose, still can hurt you, still can strangle you. The debt can still strangle you, but it just feels nicer. Think about that. We're now looking at the, the bank because they're going to come take your house. They're like, no, nah, you know what? We're not going to take your house. We're going to get you into now a 40-year product where we're going to charge you more interest, a higher interest rate over 40 years. But since it's over 40 years, you're going to save a couple hundred bucks a month. How does that feel? Think about that. So anyone that thinks right now that mortgage, let me ask you this by show of hands, put uh, type it's going down if you think real estate's going down and let me know uh, if you think, just give me like a, a, the number two, if you think it's going to be fine, it's going to keep going up and that may, we may want to buy. And, and you need to see the consensus. Why? Because this may be a small YouTube channel. This may, there may be only, you know, 679 people that agree because they hit the thumbs up just now, right? And thank you so much for that. But think about this. You, you are, you are seeing the smart people of America. I'm not joking. Um, foolish people watch fancy, fancy editing and all this kind of stuff and 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 stuff out there. The the smart people look for the meat. They look for the real information, right? And you're seeing right now what people believe, right? And it's a consensus. Well, that this little micro chasm, chasm. I don't remember this this amount of people right here, right? This in this group represent the country. All right. And so my point being is that you need to start seeing the signs of the times. And right now, other aspects of today's housing market are outweighing the benefit of lower mortgage rates right now, namely a lack of supply. Those are the fools. Those are the morons that are believing what their real estate agent or their mortgage broker tell them right now. And I want you to understand, they work for a commission. Now there's great, amazing real estate professionals out there, but I will tell you what, I'm gonna be honest with you. They are few and far between because Money is a massive motivator. I know this. I've fallen into the trap myself. Look at car salesmen. Let me know. Let me know. In your opinion, car salesmen work on a commission, right? Um, how many, there are people out there that have sold cars that to me are not, they've literally said, I would not sell a car right now. I would not buy a car right now. This is not the time. These are not the prices. I would rather earn your business later. Why? Because you're going to know be my name. I'm going to give you my cell phone. I may work here. I may start work somewhere else. I do fine. But this is not the deal to get. I have seen that twice in my life. That is a very intelligent salesman, right? He wants to get a, sa a, a sale for life, right? The rest of them, you better buy it now because it's going out. And I've done this before, literally, like this is the only one here. I walked around the side of the place and there was another car available, same car. So you got to remember the motivation between pe behind people that are working on mainly commissions, okay? All right. So it says right here, the contract interest rate for 30-year loan fix, and it tells you the breakdowns, right? Conforming loan balances, that's of 600, 726 or less. Remember, they had to raise that because the home prices keep going up, so they got to keep raising that number. It's getting crazy. It decreased from 6.4, or it decreased, think about this. It decreased to 6.4% from 6.45. Score. You guys think that's a big deal? I don't think it is, right? And this was for, you know, all your origination fees, 20% down. 
It says mortgage applications to purchase a home, however, dropped 4% last week compared with the previous week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. Demand was 35% lower than the same week a year ago. All right, so mortgage demand has weakened significantly, right? At the same time though, now let's jump into some of these amazing infographics. At the same time, inventory has increased. No, I didn't print that one off. Oh yeah, I did, okay, cool. It's the first one, I'm all organized. All right, this is housing inventory, active listing count in the United States, all right? Now this goes back to 2018, all right? What is that, a five-year chart? Okay, so now you've seen 2018, you remember when I tell you the story that I sold my home in 2018? I actually sold it in July of 2018. So let's pull out July real quick. Oh, look at that, it's right here. All right, Ninja sold his house right there, all right? because I called the top of the market. Now, this is what's crazy because people are like, but the prices kept going up. I know, stand by. The banks were in a lot of trouble back then. People don't realize this. And I said, the economy as a whole. Now I knew something was brewing and I knew the central bank digital currency was coming out. This is way before I started a YouTube channel, okay? So I took that and I bought silver. And I say I paid 14 bucks an ounce right now. And I bought Bitcoin. Go check the Bitcoin charts, guys. Do me a favor and put it in there. I want to say I paid between 2300 and 2700 Wait, no, 3,200 and 3,700. I'm, I, I get numbers backwards. So put, put the date, uh, July of, uh, 2018. And then let me know in here real quick. Someone's, someone's a crypto guy. They're going to tell me how much I bought. Okay. So there we go. So now since then in inventory, housing inventory started to drop, right? Because the economy wasn't doing well. People didn't have money and the federal reserve goes, now, we need some really cool way of doing this. Now, the sad thing is they already told us in Federal Reserve documents, you know, like 10 years ago, there was going to be a crisis around the time that we need to put in the central bank digital currency. And uh, weird, uh, what happened just a little bit later? Well, you see uh, in uh, September of 2019, by that time, the economy is doing so bad, the banks didn't trust themselves. So trust each other. So the interbank lending rate spiked and the Federal Reserve had to open up the repo window. And that's when, 2019, July of 2019. So it happened right around here, right? That's when the repo window spiked. And then something happened about two weeks after. Look at that. Starts with the C, ends with the D. All right, you got it. So now we got an interesting time. We're already seeing housing availability start, you know, for, for purchase starting to wane, starting to drop. Now it starts to fall off a cliff. Well, it's perfect though, because the economy shut down. Nobody trusts each other. They have to wear masks to protect themselves and they're afraid of sneezing now. I get, right? Totally world changes. All right, copy. So everything starts to fall, right? We got ourselves a good old fashioned recession right here, introduced to uh, the world because of the shutdown, right? That makes sense. And then it keeps dropping. Now look at where we bottom out right here. Now this is really interesting. You guys remember when I, I came out and I said, uh, I'm calling the official, because I didn't have a YouTube channel right here. This is this is it right here. I said, and I caught a lot of crap for this. It was right here. I did a video in June of 2021. And I said, all right, the housing market tops in. Now I talked about a blow off top in prices because of a panic because what's gonna happen is uh, we're gonna see even more downside when it comes to the availability of houses. So as inventory shrinks, you're gonna start to see house prices spike because there's still these dumb people running around that are scared. They're like, like, I need a house, I need a house. And you're like, and it's usually younger people, just so you know. It's usually younger people that just don't, they haven't been there long enough. And so they'll believe what the professional says with the name badge. Trust me, I had a name badge. It, it, it worked great. <laughs> I'm joking. I was the worst real estate agent in the world because I couldn't sell anybody homes. My broker just hated me. He's like, you're not hungry enough. I'm like, well, I'm working on getting deals right now with the banks to actually become an REO specialist, not, not just someone that went and took a 40 hour class. Like I'm actually getting registered with the banks and with the settlement offices to be able to handle, you know, 10, 20, uh, properties at a time for REO. I would, that's what I was working on, but he thought it was a waste of time. So, all right, no problem. So, we saw even more of a decrease right here. And this is coming into January of 2022, right? Now this was an exciting time because this is right when it was December of 2022, when the Fed said, this is where right here it had, Fed said, we're gonna get on top of that inflation thing. They're like right here, like, you know what? We're gonna do it. We're gonna get on top of inflation. It's gotten out of control. 
we've lost control of that whole 2% mandate. And then this is when they started doing it. The Fed do. The Fed's like, let's get her done. You know, we said we're going to do it, but we're not going to start until March. All right. So we're not going to start until March. So then they start raising rates. Well, as they raised rates, think about it. A lot of smart people started selling their home. They went, okay, this isn't good. There are a lot of smart people, but there wasn't a lot of smart people. There were smart people, but they weren't a lot. When you talk about the entire amount of homes for sale, it it was small in comparison to the people that went, okay, this isn't good. We better list our home, put our home up on the market, right? So those that's the inventory. This chart is the inventory of homes, right? Go up on the market. It's like, there's no way as mortgage rates go up, people are gonna be able to afford this stuff, all right? So all throughout last year, from January, essentially, or March, all the way up, this is January right here of 2023, okay? And we saw a climax in the fall, all right? Now, I tell you before, a lot of things fall in the fall. So as the fall starts, everything starts to drop off a cliff. Now, there's cyclical, uh, uh, there's seasonality, right? The best time to buy a home, I've, I've talked about this in the real estate uh, videos that I've done uh, for the course, is December. I bought every single one of my homes in December. December and January are great because everything falls off a cliff because people are too busy with the holidays, right? Not home sellers. So if you see a home that's been on the market, like really pushing the, the top line of the uh, days on market, I go to those homes and I buy them in December and January. And because their agent's going, look, your days on market is blowing out. You're on the top echelon of, of the houses that have been sitting here the longest. You got an offer right here. I know it's a low ball, but you better take it because you go any much longer, things are looking bleak and, and not desirable. And the thing is, is that real estate agent probably has only been a real estate agent for three or four years, has never seen a full-blown real estate cycle. It takes seven or 10 years to complete. And so they haven't seen this before, all right? So that's that, housing inventory, right? So check this out. Existing home sales in the US. The big news has been this explosion in existing home sales, right? this last month. Check this out. A lot of people are like, holy cow, that's amazing. Ninja's wrong. Uh, you'll, you'll find out really quick here. So, okay. Housing inventory is down, is down, right? It was higher right up here in January. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense because January existing home sales were down. There was more inventory and now there's less inventory and sales are up. All right. So this is what's going on. If you notice, and actually I think I have to re reference this one first. Yes. 30 days, 40 days is the average escrow, escrow time in, in America, right? Okay. So when somebody puts a house on the market and they market it for, let's say anywhere between 10 and 30 days and somebody wants to buy it, they get into the contract, right? Then it takes 30 days after that to close. Check this out. This is where you see the dumb money moving in and, and its effect. This is a one-year chart of the average mortgage rate on a 30-year fixed loan, okay? It starts here, April of 2022, and ends in April of 2023. All right, so you can see that from April, when the Federal Reserve started raising their benchmark rate, it took all rates, including 30-year mortgages, and raised them with them, right? Because the 10-year bond raised and all that kind of stuff. All right, so you see this, this climb. Now, you see it peak out again in the fall, right? I believe this was the total peak was in mid-November, all right? Then you start to see it wane. You start to see it fall. And we started to see a lot of panic in the news stories in December about the housing market, how it's hurting. It's really bad. Not only did that tie into the cyclical or seasonal nature of sales, home sales, like I was talking about before, but also it coincided with that rise in mortgage rates. All right, now check this out. So here is February. I marked it right here. There you see that little hash mark. Okay, right here is halfway up this line is February, these sales numbers. You see mortgage brokers right down here as this, remember, and it waned because the Federal Reserve came out and said, you know, instead of 75 basis point hike or a 50 basis point hike, we think we're sort of getting on top of this because all the news stories were showing the housing market was in turmoil. There was all these layoffs coming and stuff. The Fed said, let's not pause, but let's just raise 25 basis points, right? Just 25. And then what happened is there was sort of a euphoria because 
mortgage rates came down. But then the Fed had to turn around and go, you know what? We need to keep raising. Because a lot of people said, you know what? 25, maybe another 25 and they're done. No, the Federal Reserve came out and said, you know what? We got to raise a little bit more aggressively than 25 basis points on this next one because we haven't gotten a hold of it. So you started to see mortgage rates start to tick up. Well, in that amount of time, you know, your mortgage broker and your real estate agent are telling you, hey, if you're looking right now, because they've got clients that are driving around with them, they're like, look, I know you guys are looking, you're wanting the best deal, but look at all the news. The Fed's raising rates again, and it's going to take mortgage rates up. And so, and it did, right? It brought them up. So then what you see is a panic into the housing market. Boom. You see all this beautiful trending down, trending down, trending down, right? We're talking about existing home sales, the amount of inventory selling. And then bam. Now we've seen these before, right? Also coincides with people that have lower income that do their taxes and they're able to file their taxes because of simple, easy forms and things like that. They're able to uh, sell their, uh, get their tax return earlier and they have more money in their hand. We see this in car sales too, right? Car sales, this is like the Christmas time for car sales when when people have you know a handful of thousands of dollars in their pocket and it's burning a hole in their pocket and they can't wait to spend it. So they go ahead and do that. So that's where you're seeing this. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb so people can timestamp this, they can save it, and they could go back because there's not a lot of people on YouTube um, or on the internet making predictions, all right? So I don't mind putting my neck on the line because I can be wrong. I've been wrong before. This isn't uh, trading advice or anything like that. I'm trying to teach people. That's why I have the course. And oh, by the way, there's like around 20 of those uh, coupon codes below if you guys want to see them. And don't if they're gone, just wait for the next sale because we can only take on so many people because there's so many requests and questions. So here's the thing. We've seen these explosions before, right? But I'm going to tell you right now that I believe the Fed has to keep raising because the payroll numbers and the employment numbers are still climbing a little bit to where they're, they're feeling not comfortable with this inflation. You see, credit card debt is still ballooning and even though people's credit card limits are being cut right now, we're in that really interesting like dynamic shift that's happening. And it usually lasts about a year, year and a half, where the consumer is not paying attention to their expenses and they're just putting it on the credit card, putting it on the credit card. What's scary is that when they start putting the food on their credit card and they can't pay that off. When your food's going on your credit card, you got some serious issues. And there's some data out there that I need to start looking up on what people are putting on their credit cards. And when we start seeing the food, the everyday necessities, not like the extra stuff, the travel and stuff, that's when you know they are, it's done. They are tapped out. Because even the most, and I mean this in a respectful way, but because I've been a fool before. I'm a fool all the time. I screw up in life all the time and I'm always learning, right? So one day I was a fool in a certain subject, the next day I knew it, and I either chose to keep being a fool or to change my ways, right? But even a fool knows when they go to the grocery store and they put the, the food on the credit card and they didn't make the full payment last month, they know that they're not going to be able to make the full payment this month. When you start seeing those kind of metrics, that's when things start to really, really fall apart. But even then, you're still talking about like when the masses start doing that, 90 plus days for uh, them to stop being able to make their payment altogether or making partial payments. All right. Like I told you the other day, I found a guy that makes $2 million a year. He has $1.5 million in credit card debt. He has not, he makes $2 million a year. So if you have $1.5 million in credit card debt, you're not paying the balance off. Think about that and think about the rates people are paying. Guys, I hope you had a great uh, time. I hope you learned something. If you did, please put it down in the comment section. Put your questions too, because I like to go through these uh, questions and get, be able to give answers and put out information for you guys. And uh, I hope you have a great day. With that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.